Hi, welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton from theketonist.com, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we have a doctor in the house, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check with a trusted medical professional about your personal medical concerns. Hey there, welcome to Keto Life Support. This is Kim Howerton, and I am very excited today we will be discussing total carbs versus net carbs. Yes, it is a contentious topic, as really everything seems to be these days. Um, and it's very important because what? Keto, very concerned about our carbohydrates. And so whether someone wants to count net or total, it's a very important topic of discussion. So let's discuss. What is net carbs. So we know in the United States, when we look at a nutrition label, it'll say total carbohydrates, and then it'll say fibers, and then it'll say sugar. And the one one that's not listed are starches. But by process of elimination, you can figure out what the starches are because they're total carbs minus sugars minus fiber starches. That's what's left, okay? The nutrient of discussion when trying to count total or net is the fiber. Now, as an aside, sugar alcohols are also involved in this net calculation if they exist in the food. But for today's discussion, we're not going to talk about foods that include sugar alcohols uh, because I'm going to do a whole other podcast about that topic because I feel like it would get confusing. So for today, we're not including that in what we're discussing. So say you've got a food And it says that it has 10 total carbohydrates. And then it says that it has 4 grams of fiber. So when we take the 10 grams of total carbohydrates and we subtract the 4 grams of fiber, you end up with 6 net carbs on that food, right? And so to somebody who counts total carbs, they would say that food has 10 total carbs. And someone who counts Net carbs would say that food has six net carbs. And when they're figuring out their carb count for the day, they would put in the number that they subscribe to on how many carbs are in that food. So that's just the basics of it. Now, let's get to the why of it. Um, Why do some people count net carbs and why do some people count total carbs? So, I mean, the main reasons for counting net carbs is it gives you a bit more flexibility, right? If you get to subtract something from your total carb count, it kind of means you get more of those foods. Um, And that is a big win for some people uh, because they want more salad, right? And I can support that. I like salad. Um, And Mike Eads, who kind of takes responsibility for creating this net carb topic, said that was the point. That was why... It, it was created so people could get a bit more of those green veggies that they wanted to get into their, you know, well-formulated ketogenic diet. And that makes perfect sense, except there are things called soluble fibers in addition to insoluble fibers. Now, the reason that people say fiber doesn't count is for the most part, fiber is not digested. And so it, it just, it, it exits your body if you know what I mean. And so because of that, it will not have sort of an, it won't be absorbed as a carbohydrate, right? As a sugar. Because carbohydrates of concern are ones that are broken down into sugars according to your body, right? And if you're eating something that your body doesn't recognize as something to break down into a sugar, then it should not affect your ketogenic diet. Does that make sense? But you can break down fiber into into two categories, soluble and insoluble. Now, some soluble fiber, especially, you know, plant-based soluble fiber, is is actually great for your digestion and and for, for some people. Now, some people don't have such great experiences with fiber and their digestion. We'll go into that at some other point. But for the most part, uh, 
most types of soluble fiber appear not to have a negative impact on blood sugars. And so it would make total sense why you might count net carbs from these foods and, you know, based on the impact that people tend to see on their blood sugar and their insulin levels. The problem is that um, industry ruins everything, right? <laughs> so let's let's discuss some new products that seem to have come to market recently. Uh, there is something out there recently called Smart Sweets. It's like a little shiny, pretty gummy bear. I mean, who wouldn't love that? It's so cute and squishy and adorable. And, you know, people might start to think, oh, I missed that. I missed that gummy bear experience. And you thought, well, I can never have that on a ketogenic diet. And then this company, they come in and they're like, no, no, you can have it. This is perfectly healthy. It's wonderful. And people get very excited and they say, yay, I want some. Um, and then let's discuss. Let's look at the nutrition label. Well, I'm going to look at it. You're welcome to look at it there. I can't show it to you because this is an audio podcast. But uh, let's let's talk about it. So these Fruity gummy bears they, for a serving, uh, which is a bag. You can have the whole bag. That's very exciting to people again, right? The total carbohydrates listed are 33 grams. And you're like, wait, wait, hold up there. 33 grams of carb. This is not a keto product. And they're like, but wait, 28 of those are fiber. So you get to look at that 33 minus 28. Oh, my gosh. It is only five net carbs. That is totally keto. I can totally do that, right? But here's the problem. Several type 1 diabetics that I have talked to about this product say that when they took that, when they took it, like it's a, like it's a drug, when they ate it, their blood sugar skyrocketed and they had to play catch up games with injecting insulin. And it's just super bad news. Now we can look at this as sort of a canary in the coal mine situation, right? Um, often when we're not type 1 diabetic, you know, our body will adjust to handle what we've thrown at it. But there are repercussions to those adjustments. So we might eat these and feel perfectly fine, not knowing that our blood sugar went way up and our insulin had to compensate and all sorts of things happened that you do not want happening on a ketogenic diet, right? So because this food has managed to label itself as a low net carb product, It's kind of fooling a lot of people and it's super unfortunate. And it's, but it's one of the main reasons, not, not this food specifically. There are, I'm not picking on them more than anything else because they're not alone is what I should say. There are a lot of foods like this out there. There are a lot of products out there like this where they have played reindeer games with the amount of fiber, the amount of soluble fiber specifically. Um, and they've done it in a way that is about the math, not about the effect on someone's body. You know, Quest uh, energy bars, protein bars, are they protein bars? I think they're protein bars. Quest bars, um, which, you know, so many people love. Even, you know, the, the founder of Quest, who later went keto, says he can't have more than a half of a bar without being thrown out of ketosis. Those bars only have like two or three net carbs, I think, right? No more than four. And so that shouldn't happen if the net carb thing worked in all scenarios. So this is why I lean heavily towards suggesting people count total carbs. You just can't get into the same bad neighborhoods. Now, if you are somebody who says, I don't play in those in those fields, Kim, I'm really just eating whole foods, you know, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, asparagus and meat and things like that. And I, and I just, I, I feel better when I have more vegetables. I'm like, right on, go right ahead. I feel pretty comfortable with net carbs in that arena. Now, you, some people might try that and say, oh, I, I don't, I don't think I'm in ketosis here. Now, that was the case with me when I first went keto and I tried for a more high vegetable diet because I actually used to eat a lot of vegetables because I love them. Um, I was not in ketosis when I tested my blood ketones, they were not there and I had to go to total. And so experience is really going to help you dictate what is going on and which way you should lean. But, you know, net versus total with whole food sources, less of a sort of 
challenging discussion. When you start looking at including some of these highly processed, invented foods, um, you have to be super cautious. And so you know, my general recommendation is to count total. There's less math involved. You can't get into the same bad neighborhoods. Uh, it's a little more clear. Uh, but if, if it, if including more leafy green veggies is important to you, go right on ahead and see how net works for you. But be aware that there is a world of difference between counting net carbs on products and counting net carbs on whole food sources. Okay, so I hope that clarified some questions you had about whether to count net carbs or total carbs. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining us on Keto Life Support. If you'd like more, you can join our friendly Facebook group, Keto Life Support. Can't find it? Go to ketolifesupport.com. If you ever want to suggest a topic for discussion, that would be the place to do it. We'd really, really appreciate it if you would go to your podcast app and subscribe because that's awesome. And what would be super awesome is if you'd be so kind as to write a review for us. Though we would love it if that review was awesome, just writing a review is all we ask. So have a fabulous Keto Week and we'll see you next time.